1993, Korg launched the original Korg i3 interactive music workstation. Fast forward 27 years and I've got right here the new Korg i3 workstation. In this video, I will be giving you my honest personal opinion on the voices, the styles, the features, the strengths and weaknesses of this Korg i3 workstation, as well as asking you to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you are looking at an entry-level workstation like the Korg Cross, but would also like to just sit down, turn on an accompaniment style and start playing, this super lightweight 4kg Korg i3 Arranger workstation with a street price of $599 US dollars could be what you are looking for. Is the Korg i3 good for music production? Is it good for live performance? Is this a good controller for use with a DAW? How is the build quality? And the most popular question asked by my subscribers on my community tab is the Korg i3 better than the Korg EK50 or EK50L? I will also make comparisons with the Yamaha PSR E463, the Casio CTX3000 and CTX5000 and the Yamaha PSR S670 where appropriate. Make sure you stay tuned to the end of this video where I tell you which of these keyboards is the most suitable for you. What do you look for in an entry-level keyboard workstation? Let me know in the comments below. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Jeremy C and I am a music teacher and musician for the past 25 years. I have made more than 300 unbiased and unsponsored reviews and tutorials on my channel. If valuable content like this interests you, make sure you subscribe and smash that bell icon to get notified when I upload a new video. It is no secret that Korg i3 is based on the Korg EK50 that was released in 2018 which I reviewed right here. The LCD screen, the button layout, the voices and the styles are evident that the Korg i3 borrows heavily from the Korg EK50 and the Korg EK50L. After all, research and development costs to produce a new model isn't cheap and using the same internal engine to spin off multiple variants is an effective way for Korg to achieve cost efficiency. However, Korg has tweaked the i3 to target the younger, more contemporary, electronical loving demographic. <music> The Korg i3 workstation has 61 full-size touch-sensitive keys with 4 velocity curves. These keys feel firm to the touch, are responsive and add to a player's confidence. I had no issues playing from pianissimo to fortissimo passages. The key action is as good as the more expensive Yamaha PSR S670 and is better than the PSR E463 and the Casio CTX5000, but do not expect the same premium key action as the Yamaha PSR SX series keyboards, which cost much more than this Korg i3 workstation. On the left of this keyboard, you get a joystick controlling both pitch band and modulation. The control range for this joystick is programmable. 
Whether you prefer a pitch band and mod wheels over a joystick is a matter of preference. I personally find an XY axis joystick a lot more expressive. That may also be the reason why the new Yamaha PSR SX keyboards now sport a joystick instead of wheels found on the previous models. The Korg i3 has 790 voices ranging from acoustic instruments such as pianos, guitars, strings, brass and reed instruments to synthesize sounds such as leads and pads. These 790 voices are conveniently arranged into 200 different sound sets containing complementary voices with appropriate effects applied to the voices so you can start sounding good the minute you bring this keyboard home. The sound sets in this lower price keyboard are the strength of Korg's keyboard like this Korg i3. You don't need to have a lot of technical knowledge to shape the inbuilt samples to sound good. While the Yamaha PSR E463 has better acoustic instrument voices and the Casio CTX keyboards have very good and varied selection of electric pianos, the strength of the Korg i3 at the price point of $599 is the ability to layer up to three upper voices. You can get some really rich and fat sounds in the Korg i3 that will give your playing the added oomph. You can also make use of the more than 170 effects to shape the voices to sound exactly the way you imagine it to be. These 170 effects can also be applied onto the style accompaniment tracks. If you are not an advanced player and you need assistance playing rich harmonic intervals in your melody, the Korg i3 has an ensemble feature that will automatically use different harmonies to thicken your melody in real time for you. While Korg's ensemble is highly intelligent and pretty much 90% of the time chooses an appropriate harmonic structure for me, there is no way for you to choose specific harmony patterns unlike the Casio CTX and Yamaha PSR keyboards. The dedicated grand piano button is a feature all keyboards should have. All it takes is one button press and the Korg i3 is set up for the best ready to play piano sound. It is a misstep that Korg, while marketing the i3 to the Gen Z or Gen Z, depending which side of the Atlantic Ocean you are located, didn't include an arpeggiator in the keyboard. Arpeggiated synth sounds are the staple of EDM music. Casio has this feature in their similarly priced CTX 3000 and CTX 5000. Yamaha's $99 PSS A50 mini keyboard has this feature and an arpeggiator is also found on the $299 Yamaha PSR E463. Before I review the other features of the Korg i3, do take a minute to check out my recommended keyboards and pianos in the video description below. If you want to learn how to play keyboards on your own, I have also listed the books I use to teach my piano and keyboard students.
What a long way the original i3 has come. I remembered my Cork i3 more than 20 years ago, only had 48 styles, and I paid more than 2,500 US dollars for it. The new Cork i3 here has 270 styles. This is fewer styles than the Cork EK50L, but you do get a handful of additional EDM styles specifically programmed for the i3 that is not found in the Cork EK series. There are also many non-EDM styles ranging from pop, rock, country, ballroom, Latin, and world music. While there isn't a style editor in the Cork i3, you can effortlessly personalize the styles by muting individual accompaniment parts, as well as adjusting the individual track volume using the convenient dedicated buttons. With just a button press, you can change the drum kit and instruments of the accompaniment styles to get a unique backing track. Each style comes with four variations and different fill-ins as well as two intros and two endings for you to craft your perfect song arrangement. I personally find Yamaha styles to be better programmed than those found in the Cork Arrangers. However, Cork i3 styles do sound better than those found on the Casio CTX. If you are not well versed in chord progression, don't worry, the Korg i3 has a chord mode which is similar to the smart chord feature found in the Yamaha PSS E30 Remy. As well as the upcoming Yamaha PSR E273, this smart chord feature is also quickly finding its way on numerous MIDI controllers like the Native Instruments M-Series keyboards which I own as well. Seven chords suitable for the genre of music has been programmed into this smart chord feature. By just pressing one of the eight buttons while a style is playing, you can get some interesting and unique chord progression. You can also learn from the suggested chord progression and expand your chord vocabulary. EQ knobs are conveniently located on the keyboard should you need to tweak the overall sound in real time quickly, depending on your live playing scenario. While these EQ knobs can be useful, I really do question why Korg did not make these two knobs to control effects send levels instead. This is more so when the Korg i3 is marketed as a contemporary EDM music making keyboard. These two knobs are way more useful if it can be used to apply filters and oscillators variations to both voices and rhythms. This live performance control is iconic of contemporary electronic music. I use these live knobs often and Yamaha has included live control knobs in their consumer keyboards from their $299 Yamaha PSR E463 onwards. The Korg i3 provides 50 memory slots arranged in 10 banks for you to store your voice in style settings. This can be recalled quickly in your performances. The Korg i3 is marketed as an entry-level workstation priced below the Korg Cross 2. That is because the Korg i3 has a 16-track real-time sequencer with a 999 song capacity. You get non-linear sequencing which gives you the ability to punch in and punch out as well as to override and overdub your recordings. But I am puzzled that the sequencer doesn't have a quantization feature to tighten up sloppy live playing. The sequencer mode does allow you to play along with your sequence data as well as MIDI, MP3 and WAV audio files. 
I am happy to report that you can record audio directly to a USB stick. I also like that any other sounds you input via the auxiliary in port will also be recorded into the audio mix going to your USB stick. I am disappointed, however, that there is no USB audio interface built in. You can send and receive MIDI with your DAW, but you will need an audio interface if you need to send the Korg i3 audio directly to your computer. The Korg Cross 2 has a built-in audio interface, and the $199 Yamaha PSR E363 also has a USB audio interface, and in my opinion, this is a glaring omission especially when Korg markets this i3 as a workstation. While many multi-track music production has moved to the desktop and even mobile door, there is still much value in a hardware sequencer like this. There are many markets where keyboard owners may not have the financial ability to invest in a very powerful and expensive computer that can run massive multi-gigabyte VSTs. An arranger workstation like the i3 is invaluable in this case. The Yamaha PSR E-Series includes just a basic song recorder and doesn't have a 16-track sequencer like the Korg i3. In my opinion, however, the lack of a step editor and an event-level editing prevents the Korg i3 from being a full-fledged workstation. For many users, these deep editing will not be missed, but it would nonetheless be nice if Korg had not used the cripple hammer on this. In my opinion, the workstation label on this i3 has to be taken with a huge pinch of salt. The sequencer has many limitations and doesn't really allow the user to independently edit each of the 16 tracks freely like the sequencer in the Korg Cross 2 or Yamaha PSR S670. But of course, these two keyboards cost quite a bit more. Fortunately, you can use the USB MIDI port of the Korg i3 to use the 12 different bundled software, including various VSTs, the industry-leading and very powerful DAW Ableton Live Lite, which is what I use, as well as a 3-month subscription to the school learning app for beginners. Yamaha includes nothing with the PSR E, PSR SX, as well as their flagship $6,000 Yamaha Genos keyboard. A surprise considering Yamaha owns Steinberg and Steinberg produces the Cubase DAW software, and Cubase is pretty much bundled with really cheap audio interfaces, even less than $100. A 5-din media port is also available for you to control an external desktop synth. While a MIDI in port would be nice, I am not complaining. 5-din MIDI ports have slowly disappeared from keyboards under $1,000, and it is nice that the i3 has a 5-din MIDI out port. In addition to the USB MIDI and 5-din MIDI port, you can also find the usual headphones port, pedal input port, auxiliary in port, quarter inch stereo output ports, and a USB 2 device port for plugging in a USB stick to save your user files. Just like the lightweight Korg Cross and the Korg EK50, the Korg i3 can run on either DC power or with 6 AA batteries. Runtime with batteries is very good at 6 hours to 7 hours because the i3 does not have built-in speakers. While the lack of built-in speakers can be a deal breaker for some, I find that connecting to a portable speaker or cheap computer speakers is easy if I don't want to use my headphones. And for performing, you would be better off with more powerful external amplification anyway. 
So here are my final thoughts. One of my gripes of the Korg EK series and now the Korg i3 is the lack of an ecosystem for third parties to produce additional downloadable styles. i3 and EK owners are pretty much limited to loading Korg PA50 or micro arranger styles and nothing else more. Korg has much to learn from Apple where the iOS devices have a diverse and vibrant third-party ecosystem that ensures that their customers and their users stay within that system. 27 years ago, the i3 Interactive Music Workstation was unequal. However, in 2020, the Arranger consumer keyboard landscape is very different. The Yamaha PSR E463 is $300 cheaper than this Korg i3 and has built-in speakers, an arpeggiator, two live control knobs, an audio interface, a rather gimmicky quick sampling features, and really sweet acoustic voices. But the E463 has only a 48-note polyphony and doesn't have a modulation wheel. The Casio CTX 5000 is $150 cheaper than this Korg i3 and has powerful speakers, a 17-track sequencer, a style creator, an editor, as well as an arpeggiator with a ton of lush EPs. But the user interface of the Casio is notoriously unfriendly and the user manual are also not the best written around. In my opinion, Korg produces the best user manuals in comparison to Yamaha, Casio and Roland consumer keyboards. The Yamaha PSR S670 costs $250 more than the Korg i3 but does significantly more than the additional $250 that you pay. However, the Yamaha PSR S670 is half a decade old and is due for a refresh anytime. For more serious music production, the Korg Cross 2 for just $200 more than the i3 is a better contender. It has a full-fledged sequencer, a capable sampler, expandable sample memory, a USB audio interface, an arpeggiator, a dedicated drum track recording, a microphone input, as well as the ability to layer up to 16 layers for impossibly thick sounds. Notwithstanding the aforementioned, the Korg i3 is a multi-hyphenate, a jack of all trades, although a master at none. It is a competent arranger, albeit without built-in speakers. It has an easy-to-operate 16-track sequencer, although missing some features I often use. With a 5-din MIDI out, the i3 makes for an excellent controller as well. If you are looking for a lightweight battery-operated arranger, workstation, controller, hybrid keyboard for under $600, you won't go wrong with the Korg i3. I hope you find my buying advice on the Korg i3 useful. My name is Jeremy C and I'll see you soon.